Hey, this is the second uh, video I have in my Owl Bot Manager series of videos. And again, this is sort of phase one where I'm just looking at uh, understanding more about robotics and motors and things. So uh, continuing on from the last video, I'm going to have more in-depth look at uh, motor control using pulse width modulation, uh, how I set that up in the microcontroller, and how I can uh, use the motor controller to increase the current for those and uh, actually control the motor uh, in response to whatever pulse width I've set. Uh, part of that is I'm going to change my code a little bit so I can log what the uh, number of pulses coming back from the encoder are so I can uh, do some experiments with things like seeing what the acceleration, deceleration rate is, um, see what sort of things I might have to do in the code if I want the the device to move a certain number of pulses then I probably have to uh, compensate for those acceleration and deceleration rates so uh, again I'm going to change the encoder reading so it starts logging it maybe every tenth of a second and uh, keeps track of things what's my pulse width setting what how many pulses are actually coming out from the encoder so I can start seeing a uh, sort of run on on uh, a number of pulses or movement of the motor after I change the pulse widths and tied to that is uh, getting some code in there for uh, managing acceleration, deceleration of the motor. And ultimately, uh, you do this sort of thing to make sure, say, if you've got two motors, that uh, if one motor is slower than the other, that it can compensate for that. So what sort of code do I need to keep two motors in sync? So if one gets uh, slowed by, down by hitting an obstacle, how do we compensate on the other motor? So make sure that the robot's still going to move straight if you've got motors on either side of the robot. So that's the plan, we'll see how we get on. Just before I dive into the pulse width modulation uh, experiments, uh, so I added a rotary encoder to my test bed setup here just so I'd have an easy way of uh, changing uh, speeds on the motor or at least send a value to the pulse width modulation test that I'm doing. You can see here I've got it displaying on the OLED as well. Okay, quick look at the code I used to get the rotary encoder going. Mostly I just uh, took it from Mike Teachman's uh, uh, MicroPython rotary uh, code on GitHub. There's a link there. I made some little changes, so uh, because I'm not using ESP32, I just called the 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 encoder rotary underscore IRQ. It's not ESP32 or anything specific. And then I took his example and just uh, called it rotary example at the moment on, on mine. And uh, got the same code as in the previous example or previous video for using the OLED. So I set up the SSD1306 library here, use a frame buffer. Otherwise I import uh, uh, rotary IRQ uh, class from rotary underscore IRQ. Uh, set up the I2C interface and the width and the height of my OLED display. Uh, initialize the OLED object. Then initialize the rotary IRQ object. I'm um, using the Raspberry Pi Pico and uh, found the, the pins that I could most easily use were pins or GPIO pin 14 and 15. Um, otherwise just set the minimum value and maximum value I wanted and uh, this range mode I set it to range bounded. There's a few options when you look at uh, Mike's code but range bounded basically says once it gets to zero it stops here. Once it gets to the maximum value it stops there. Otherwise it's just a little uh, test loop here in the example at the moment where it runs through if it sees a new value uh, from the encoder uh, then it's just displaying it on the OLED and that's what you saw on the example. Uh, now I'm going to get started on the pulse with modulation tests to control the motor. So you can see here I set up the Pi Pico to connect to my motor controller. It's using the uh, GPIO 11 as the output to drive the pulse width modulation on the motor controller and then using the other uh, GPIO pins on the Pico to drive the control functions on the controller. Let's have a look at the code I used to test out the pulse width modulation and the actual motor controller. Uh, so I did it in two sets of MicroPython code. So first I made this class L 
298 for the actual um, piece that controls the motor and the uh, motor control signals, motor controller control signals, and then a, a test, a routine to actually exercise uh, this class and the associated controller and motor. So let's have a look at the class. Um, so the class is called L298. Uh, when initializing an object from that class, you need to pass it uh, three pins. So the pins used for the motor controller. So first is the pin that's going to be used for pulse width modulation. The pin on the microcontroller that's going to be used for the first uh, control pin and the second control pin. And then uh, you can pass a frequency or you can just use a default frequency of a thousand hertz, which is quite a good one to use. Then the next part of the class are some functions to uh, set the control pins. So set them so the motor controller will be in forward mode or in reverse mode or in braking mode. And then uh, functions to actually set the motor going and the, setting the motor speed. Uh, just a note here, so at the moment I'm passing the speed or the required speed as a percentage, so 0 to 100. And then uh, what each of these routines do, does, so in the forward routine it sets the control to say uh, turn the motor into forward mode. And then uh, set the duty cycle to the duty cycle that uh, is uh, aligned with that percentage speed. And I have this little routine speed to U16 or uh, unsigned 16-bit integer uh, that takes a speed as a percentage and then divides the maximum duty cycle which is uh, to the 16 and multiplies speed by that to basically convert it is uh, a percentage of the maximum speed that is possible so that's used to set the speed or convert the speeds from percentages to the actual duty cycle number that's needed by the by the pulse with uh, modulator uh, logic on the microcontroller and then there's this last function called stop which just sets the the bake break pins and then sets the speed to zero to stop the, the actual motor. And then the actual tester uh, for this, uh, it's a little busy because I added in the OLED display to display what the current sp speed is set to. Uh, but that's what that's doing is uh, initializing the OLED display. I uh, showed that in an earlier video. Uh, then I've created a routine to set the speed. So basically pass it the speed, uh, shows the speed on the OLED. Uh, prints out the speed on my uh, command line for Python if I want to see it there and then sets uh, calls the forward routine with the speed and then goes to sleep for five seconds and this is where I'm actually using the object so I set up the my 289 object by passing it the pin numbers that I'm using uh, for this test the frequency to run the pulse with modulation at and then a continuous while loop where it uh, just cycles through the various speeds. And again, remember, it's going to sleep for five seconds between each of these. So it'll stay on the speeds for five seconds as it goes to each speed setting. So let's have a look at it running. This shows my MicroPython PWM code running. Uh, so on the OLED, it's displaying what the current speed value is as a percentage. And then on the oscilloscope, it's showing you the waveform and the current duty cycle. So we see that staying in sync when I get to 75%, it's 75% duty cycle in the oscilloscope. When it gets to 100%, it just flatlines at 3.3 volts. And again, zero speed, it flatlines at zero volts. So I'm happy with the signal coming out of the actual microcontroller. So now I'm gonna connect everything up to the motor controller and then have the motor connected to the motor controller as well. Uh, so really running the motor for real with the logic. Uh, so I've made some changes to my uh, testing routine. Uh, so you see down here in the set speed, I've now added another parameter uh, to allow it to set, whether it wants to be in the forward or reverse mode for the motor. Uh, I've also added another line to the OLED to display whether it's in forward or reverse mode. 
Uh, you see here it's just got a simple if condition. If it's in forward, it calls the forward routine. If it's in reverse, it calls the reverse routine. I've changed the sleep to three seconds just to make it run a little faster. Again, I set up my uh, 298 object uh, with the pins I'm going to use. And then I've got a longer set of uh, tests that I'm going to do. So first I set the speed to zero, then 25, 50%, 75%, 100%. So those will be all in forward mode by default. Then I set speed back down to zero. And then I go through doing the same thing, but running the motor in reverse uh, direction. So I basically uh, enter that forward mode is false. Then I do the stop. And then I'm just doing one more uh, OLED display manually here uh, to show that the we're in stop mode at that mo moment and it's in stop for five seconds. So let's have a look at that running. I now have everything con connected up from the mo microcontroller to the motor controller and to the motor. And I'm also uh, tracking the signal going into the motor on an oscilloscope just to see the direction of the waveforms. Uh, you can see here as it speeds up the motor's getting faster. Uh, the signal's negative at the moment on the oscilloscope and then when I flip the direction you see the motor going the other way and you also see the signal on the oscilloscope going the other way which is due to the H bridge on the motor controller so everything looks like it's running well so that's it for this video uh, next video I'm looking to combine using the motor encoder with the uh, motor controller uh, mainly so I can set a direction and a distance rather than a direction and just a percentage speed uh, in my routine.